It was 2013 when Adobe spent millions on what they called the uncrackable security. They wanted to stop piracy forever. So it all started with something called the Creative Cloud, a new subscription model they believed would stop illegal sharing. No more one-time purchases, no more sharing disks. They thought it was impenetrable, but then two days later, a cracked version of the software appeared online. The millions spent on defense and cutting edge encryption was all gone by an invisible army. But how? That's where our story begins. To understand how this happened, you have to think like them. Let's assume you want to break a lock. What's the simplest approach? You get the key, right? In software, that key is the serial number or license key. So when you purchase a software, you're not just buying code, you're buying permission to use that code. So you type in the right combination and it opens. That's how it worked in the 80s. But then the game changed. In 1998, major companies like Adobe invested millions in two powerful tools, SafeDisk and Securoam. These weren't just normal programs, they were digital fortresses designed to make piracy impossible. SafeDisk promised unbreakable disk access, while Securoam boasted layered encryption, and the developers behind them promised absolute and unbreakable protection. But promises are made to be broken because within just seven days, what took teams of engineers years to build were completely shattered. But guess what? Some companies even got smarter. They added USB keys called dongles. So you had to plug it in to make the software run. But unfortunately, hackers found ways to trick the software into thinking that the dongle was plugged when it wasn't. No matter what those companies built, hackers always find a way over it. But then came DRM, Digital Rights Management. This was different because it checks you all the time and confirms that you are logged in. Your account is real and your system is approved. Think of it like a security guard that follows you around while you use the software, always watching, always checking, and never trusting you. And this is exactly how Adobe's Creative Cloud works. So when you open Photoshop, it doesn't just launch. It secretly scans your computer, your processor, your RAM, your hard drive, and then build a digital fingerprint, which is a unique ID just for your computer. Then it sends that ID to Adobe's servers and waits for a reply. If the reply is good, Photoshop opens. If not, it shuts down. Sounds impossible to beat, right? But no, hackers had to stop that conversation. Using another tool called IDA Pro, they can freeze Photoshop at the exact moment it's checking your license. And in this frozen state, they can see everything. The values, the keys, and all the secrets. Then they make tiny changes to the code and tell Photoshop to stop checking or to always say, yes, this person paid, even when they didn't. Some hackers went even further to build fake Adobe servers that pretended to be Adobe. So when Photoshop tries to verify a user, these fake servers answer instead. Yes, this user is legitimate. This license is real, let them in. And Photoshop believed it thinking it was talking to the real Adobe. But this is where the story gets really interesting because as protection gets really tough, those hackers started to use something called a loader. Think of it like a magician standing at the door. Every time Photoshop checks its license, the loader jumps in and changes the answer and then injects its own code into Photoshop's memory. What makes loaders so effective is they don't change any files on your computer. They only change the program while it's running in memory, which makes it almost impossible to detect. Even antivirus softwares cannot detect it, and that's why some crack softwares ask you to open a special tool every time you use the software. That tool is the loader. But Adobe didn't just gave up. They found a clever way to fight back. So instead of running everything on your computer, they moved key features to the cloud. Take neural filters in Photoshop, they don't work locally, you send them your photo. Adobe processes it on their servers, then sends back the result. Nothing is done on your computer. So cracking this would mean breaking into Adobe itself. But here's what most people don't know. Behind every software is not just one genius in a hoodie. It's an entire team of organizations like Reloaded, Core, and CPY, and each member has a role. One studies the code, another builds the crack, and another tests it across different computers. And believe it or not, many of these hackers follow rules. They won't touch banking apps, and they avoid medical systems. For them, cracking Photoshop is not about stealing. It's about proving no lock is unbreakable. So if you've ever used a crack software, smash that like and subscribe for more stories.